Outcome harvesting is a process in which people within a company capture the business value of existing initiatives and map them to a strategic roadmap. The output of an outcome harvesting process can be anything from an action plan with specific objectives to a life strategy map identifying exploration areas. The goal is to get more clarity around the company's mission and identify the different pathways that could lead to its realization. It helps reveal what works, what doesn't, and why it doesn't work so you can improve processes going forward. Outcome harvesting involves identifying gaps in current initiatives and mapping out their potential positive outcomes or PPOs. These PPOs are usually identified through qualitative research or as part of an implementation pilot project. This unlocks ideas about possible ways these initiatives could be better aligned with other programs or improved entirely to deliver even greater benefits to stakeholders. The outcome harvesting process needs to be customized according to the context. The steps are not always distinct, and feedback from one or more actions can cause a return to earlier steps. Step 1. Design the user questions that will guide the process and decide what information will need to be collected. Many of the questions you'll need to answer during the process will come from stakeholders. They might ask how they can help, what they can do to make things better, or what they hope to get out of it. It's important that you have a good understanding of your audience and why these people are invested in the outcome harvesting process. Step 2. Gather the data by reviewing existing documentation and draft the descriptions. Start out by gathering the data through reviewing existing documentation and conducting qualitative research with team members. This information helps you identify gaps in current initiatives and map out their potential positive outcomes or PPOs. Next draft the descriptions of these PPOs. This process might be facilitated through conversation or an online brainstorming tool like mind mapping. The purpose of this step is to consolidate different ideas into a single, unified view of the company's strategic direction. Finally, create an action plan that incorporates all of the PPOs and provides a timeline for their implementation. This may involve developing a prioritized list with deadlines for specific actions or creating an overarching strategic plan that guides day-to-day -day efforts. Step 3. Engage with the change agents to review the draft outcome descriptions. Engaging with the change agents within your company to identify the best outcomes is essential. When conducting qualitative research, it's important to understand what outcomes are most meaningful for the intended stakeholders and how they can be translated into concrete actions. For example, a potential outcome of implementing a new sales initiative might be more time for salespeople to focus on key accounts versus exploring for prospects. With these insights in mind, you can use the available data and feedback from change agents to better address needs. There may be gaps in current initiatives or changes that could be improved. You should also ensure that you're engaged with those who will enact your plans or contribute significantly to them on an ongoing basis. If you don't have enough buy-in from those closest to the initiative, then it's unlikely that it will succeed. Step 4. Analyze and interpret the outcomes of initiatives. The next step of the process involves analyzing and interpreting the outcomes of these initiatives. This means that people within a company identify what's working, what's not working, and why it isn't working. After understanding these initial steps, this basic first step outline could be utilized to enact the process. 1. Identify initiatives to harvest and create hypotheses about their outcomes. 2. Test the hypotheses with qualitative research and pilot projects. 3. Harvest the outcomes of initiatives through quantitative analysis. 4. Develop action plans for how to align initiatives with each other better, or improve them entirely, so they can be more effective. Step 5. Support the use of the findings. The process of outcome harvesting offers additional possibilities for the company's growth. One way to support the use of findings is with a review board that reviews findings and helps guide the next steps. The review board collects feedback from stakeholders and uses it to prioritize implementing changes identified as a result of outcome harvesting activities. Some firms don't have a formal review board, but it is possible to use an informal one. These can be set up using any number of tools such as online forums or having a conversation with your team members after they return from a project using outcome harvesting techniques. In short, outcome harvesting offers many benefits for companies and their employees. 
It can help identify strategies to help you achieve your business goals faster with less effort. Outcome harvesting is a methodology used to collect evidence of change and then work backward to assess the contribution to that change. It is useful in situations where it is difficult to identify what has caused change or where there are multiple factors influencing change and help assess the impact in these complex situations. If you would like to learn more about outcome harvesting visit business901.com.